Welcome to our iPhone 6 Plus review. This is a look at the larger iPhone 6 Plus with a 5.5 inch screen and a small comparison to the iPhone 6 that features a 4.7 inch display. Now, most users may go with the more accessible iPhone 6, but if you want a really big screen, something that can possibly compete with the Samsung Galaxy Note 4, then you're gonna wanna keep looking at what the iPhone 6 Plus has to offer. Now, both of the new iPhones feature a new curved design. So we have an all metal back. We no longer have glass at the top and the bottom. We have these lines in their place. You'll either love or hate these lines. Odds are you're going to buy some type of case to put on your iPhone 6 Plus. So, you know, don't make a big deal about it. The camera sticks out slightly. You can kind of see it there sticks out slightly. Again, if you're going to put any type of case, even a really thin case on, you're not going to be able to notice that the camera is protruding. So these are things that may annoy some people, but overall, they're not a very big deal. You're going to be able to get past them as you live with the phone and start using the phone. We really like this new curved design, and it's really exciting when you're on the front and you can slide your finger because the glass even though the screen is not curved, the glass curves over the edge. So when you swipe, you get a nice curved feel. It feels real natural to swipe along that. Some cases that are a little bit thicker or include a bezel to add some protection to your display will interfere with that. So keep that in mind if that's something that you really like. You're not gonna get the exact same experience when you put a case on this. Now, if we look at the bottom of the iPhone 6 Plus here, you'll see we have a new speaker grill. We have the same lightning port, microphone, and a headphone jack. The speaker grill doesn't make a huge change, but it does definitely sound like Apple put a better speaker in the iPhone 6 Plus. It's louder than the iPhone 5S and iPhone 5. One thing about this device is the Vibration when it's on silent or vibrate mode is insane. It's a little bit obnoxious. Uh, it can wake someone up next to you. So too bad there's no way to completely disable that for when you charge it at night. Speaking of charging, you don't need to charge quite as much as you do with a iPhone 6. The battery is larger in the iPhone 6 Plus. And after about a month of use, there's only been one day where I had to plug this in before the end of the day. Typically I end with at least 20%, and that's with calls, FaceTime, lots of app usage, really pretty heavy usage, and this lasts me through most days. On the days where it doesn't last is when I'm in poor coverage areas. On that day I was in a hospital and in a waiting room, and I just had really poor coverage all day, and that drains the battery life on this device. There's no real way around that. Now, as far as the screen goes, we have this nice five and a half inch display. It's slightly smaller than the Galaxy Note 4 and it doesn't have quite the same high resolution, but you know what? Most people aren't gonna care. Even when I pull up a nice photo on this and on the Galaxy Note 4, at first glance, unless I'm looking at them side by side, I'm not seeing a huge, huge difference. Yes, a Galaxy Note 4 with a quad HD display is going to show more on the display, more on this photo, but at the end of the day, this is a very, very nice 1080p display. And that's the same amount of pixels as your HDTV packed into this five and a half inch screen. Now, as far as the size goes, we've heard a lot of concerns about will this fit in your pocket? Uh, can you hold it and use it with one hand? Apple includes a feature called reachability. So if I tap on that home button, I don't push it, I just tap, it will drag that down. So now I can reach an app that's in this upper corner. Uh, it works the same way if I'm inside an app and I wanna reach that compose button. Now I can reach that compose button without grabbing the phone with my second hand. Now, this is handy, but this is a pretty big phone. It's a little bit slippery. And especially if I'm gonna use it in landscape, I'm gonna to wanna to use two hands. There are a lot of new landscape features in apps. So like this right here, you can see there's a new layout. 
so that I can kind of use this similar to like an iPad. And if I tap on this, we, you can see we have a new landscape keyboard that has some options here, has some arrows, cut, copy, paste, bold. Um, so you can do a little bit more. It's a little bit handier for productivity than an iPhone 6. Maybe not as close to that iPad mini productivity, but for the most part, I've been able to leave my iPad mini at home and use this. And that's for entertainment, that's for productivity. Uh, I use this for NFL Sunday ticket and to manage fantasy football. And it's really handy to have this bigger screen. I can fit this in my pocket uh, with a pair of jeans and most of the time it's just fine. I've been carrying around a Note device. This is the Note 4. It's about the same size. For about a year I've been carrying the Note 3, which is similar to these, and it fits in your pocket. It's not a big issue. Not everyone is going to have a pocket that's big enough for this, so that's where you might need to be concerned. If you wear tight jeans, if you have small pockets, occasionally some pants that I wear doesn't fit in there perfect, but for the most part, the iPhone 6 is not too big for me. It might be too big for you, so the best thing to do is go into a store and check it out Go hands-on, see how it feels in your hand. Can you hold it with one hand and do common tasks? Can you make a phone call or type out a quick message with one hand? Those are the things that really matter with one hand. And I can do those with one hand, but I still prefer to use two hands for my overall iPhone 6 Plus experience. Now with the iPhone 6, where we are smaller, as you can see right there, it's an overall smaller device. I can do a lot more with one hand on this device. Now, Apple upgraded the camera. We have a new 8 megapixel sensor with larger pixels. We have focus pixel technology, and we have this dual LED flash. The dual LED flash is a carryover from the iPhone 5S. It helps produce a more natural tone when you do need to use the flash. The iPhone 6 Plus camera includes optical image stabilization. And so the camera lens and movement in there will kind of shift to help compensate because as you're taking a picture, you're kind of shaking your hands just a little bit, even if you don't notice it. And this will help remove that, remove that blur when you're taking a photo of something that's still, like a landscape, especially in low light. This won't automatically freeze small children, puppies, in-laws that move a lot when you're trying to take their picture, it's not going to solve that problem. Uh, the fast shutter will help prevent that in some cases, but it's not the be-all end-all of blurry photos. Personally, as I look at the photos that I've taken with the iPhone 6 Plus with optical image stabilization and with the iPhone 6, which uses the same sensor but no optical image stabilization, I don't see a huge difference in the photos I'm taking. You may be able to discern that we have some samples up at Gotta Be Mobile that you can check out, and you may be able to factor that into how you take photos, but for the most part, that is a handy feature, and I'm sure I'll enjoy it sometimes, but it's not the, oh, I need to buy the iPhone 6 Plus feature that you might think. Overall, I really like this. I like the super slow motion, 240 frames per second, that the iPhone 6 Plus and iPhone 6 can shoot. If you head over to Gotta Be Mobile, you'll see a really cool looking photo of a, or video of a bumblebee that is just, I can't believe that I shot it with the iPhone 6 Plus. Now, as far as performance goes, this is an iPhone 6 Plus. It's brand new. We have all kinds of cool new processors. We have the A8 processor. We have an M8 motion coprocessor. This device is snappy. You can quickly jump through your apps. It runs basically anything we've thrown at it. I've already shown you the power of the iPhone 6 and that you can switch between apps and do a lot of that day-to-day -day activity. It's fast. You're going to be able to use a lot of the apps that you want. And with the new A8 processor, you have all the power you need. Now, with this, we're in a Zen garden. And so we can interact with the tree here. We can grow all of these cherry blossoms on here. And if we swing around, we can see more of this. 
and eventually we're going to be able to shake all of these off. And so it takes a lot of power to render all of these that are dropping, the movement here. This is just an illustration of some of the power that the iPhone 6 Plus has. Now you're not going to be playing with cherry blossom trees every day, but if you like to game, we're going to probably see some very cool games come to the iPhone 6 Plus that leverage the power and that look a little bit better on this large screen than they do on the smaller iPhone 6 display. At the end of the day, the iPhone 6 Plus isn't too big for me to use. It's just a little bit bigger than the phone that I want to use every day, which is the iPhone 6. Now, I really enjoy the large display when it comes to trying to be a little bit more productive and typing in landscape. I like it for entertainment, whether it's watching Sunday Ticket, watching football, or using apps like Hulu Plus and Netflix to catch up on my favorite TV shows. But when it comes down to using it on the go, reachability is nice, but I still have to hold this larger phone and that becomes a little bit of a challenge. I wouldn't let talk of a big iPhone 6 Plus or even iPhone 6 Plus bending dissuade you from considering the smartphone, but your best bet is gonna to be to go into your local store and check out both of these devices. For many people, the iPhone 6 is simply gonna be a better fit overall, but if you can deal with the small limitations to mobility and one-handed use that come with this larger screen, and by mobility I mean using the phone while you're walking down the street or something like that, then the iPhone 6 Plus is definitely something that is a good phone for the right person. That person may also be considering something like the Galaxy Note 4 or coming from a Galaxy Note 3 where you're already used to dealing with a bigger phone. So there is our iPhone 6 Plus review. This is Apple's larger iPhone 6. It's a great phone, just might not be the best phone for every user. You can head over to gottobemobile.com and check out more about this review, including photos, sample videos, sample photos, and more on why we feel the way we do about this device.